Hello, welcome back everyone. This is the latter part of trial number two. Just like yesterday's trial, I won't be going through the profiles or evidence again. I'm going to assume you watched that. She did seem pretty distraught. Apparently, she's part of the SL9 incident. And here comes my witness, Jake Marshall. How is he going to explain his bloody handprint? A patrolman with a drinking problem. Ha! <laughs> I see what you did there. Pretty much straight to business. The real question is, do I use my normal voice or do I miserably attempt an accent? Hmm. Apologies in advance. Day of the crime. My job was to keep a wary eye on that bone archer. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. You know, I almost got away with that, although I think I did sort of sound like the after effects of Forrest Gump having sex with a Furby. But apart from that, it was great. Anyway, it's not really about how I said it, but it's what he said. Then I suppose he didn't know about them. He did say he wasn't very familiar with the machines. Alright then, the cross-examination. This is the moment to strike, I think. This is the moment I've been waiting for. I'm going to reveal to the court Marshall's bloody handprint. Let's go to that statement where he says he was, um, at a saloon. Yeah, this is it. Now let's see how he reacts to this. If he was really at a street side saloon, then how come we found this? I don't think he's quite getting it, unless he frequently cuts his hand before making his rounds, as he says.
I got the crowd going. It's only going to get better. Ah, what if he cuts himself shaving all the time? That might explain the blood. Ooh, okay. Sit back, relax, get comfy, guys. This is gonna be bullshit. Alright, this is testimony number two, bloodstained fingerprints. This time, without an accent. Like I said, it's only natural for my fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. The bloodstain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Or didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? See? I had nothing to do with it. Oh yes, there's certainly room for doubt. In fact, there's big wide open plains for doubt. I don't think I'm actually in a position where I can present something to him yet, so there's a couple of things I want to press him on. This statement is one of them. Really? That locker with the bloody handprint on it is his. Interesting. I suppose that also means that there is a possibility that Angel Star still has a locker in there. Anyway, Marshall's prints have been updated. I've got some good information out of that. Okay. One of them just happened to be at the same place as the bloodstained handprint. Okay, I can't just deny that possibility. But, can you tell us any more? No, okay, that press was sort of pointless. Okay, okay, um... Let's go ahead a little bit. Didn't you know the murderer was wearing gloves? I did. How did you? I think it's a little strange that we found fingerprints on one, but not the other.
There's that tape again. Yeah, that's the real question, isn't it? Can we find his trail on that videotape? Too bad it wasn't me in that video, right, partner? Hmm... We'll see about that. Not to mention that blue badger and his fucking flag. Well, we've seen the tape enough times. I expect you noticed something. Now, I could fast forward this a little bit, but I'm not going to. This is a chance to refresh your memory. You do realise that piece of plywood knows, don't you? He knows exactly where he's putting that flag. He wants to make my job as hard as fucking possible. Stop right there. Something has changed. And that something is this. Yes, and thanks to the witness's earlier testimony, we now know that that locker actually belongs to him. And of course, it had to have been him. He's the only one that can open that locker. You have to give him credit for doing it out of the sight of the camera, though. He did it very quickly. Well done. Actually, yes it does.
<laughs> he really doesn't get it. This is just one of those parts of the game where you have to prove you've been paying attention. Of course, it's the fingerprint scanner on the locker. He is clearly one of them, or at least was. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have our Detective Goodman. Hello? <laughs> what? I think pretty much everyone has worked this out already, but let's just explain it very slowly, very clearly for the judge, because let's face it, he is the stupidest one here. There is only one place he can be, and that is where the victim was standing. He is Detective Goodman. Oh, come on, Edgeworth. You're smarter than that. The explanation, of course, is that Jake Marshall was impersonating Detective Goodman and was using his card. If he had shown Officer Meekins his ID card, the cover was blown. <sighs> Maybe I've played this game too much. I'm remembering this word for word, nearly. He's still denying it. Oh. <laughs> 
You see what I mean? This is ridiculous. But he did, didn't he? He said the same thing earlier. I think this time, Edgeworth has the answer. Now that, I might be able to do. It has been so far. I think it's about to make another appearance. Okay, here we go again. Now, for some reason, Officer Marshall felt that it was needed that the locker be opened, and that he insert a white cloth of some kind. Now the question you really need to ask yourself is, what is this white cloth? When you figure that out, the reason that he opened his locker becomes amazingly clear. Now, I wonder if I'm going to get this right first time. Perfect. Look at all that blood. And this was a bloody white coat that needed to be hidden. Was that it? Was that an admission?
Marshall's confession is apparently going to be a testimony. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out and managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. Yeah, that is a little bit weird. Although there was quite a lot of blood on the coat. It's like you chopped his thumb off or something. Officer Meekins isn't a fighter. He's a bleeder. Okay. I think what I'm going to do here is just systematically go through all the statements and press each one. Detective Goodman, although Marshall does seem amazingly dedicated. So he's admitting he did all this, but I really want to know why. Okay, he put it there. That makes sense. We didn't find it anywhere near the body. Really is better to be lucky than smart sometimes. But that is a very good point. And it must have been quite recently as well. You knocked out Officer Meekins. Go on.
yeah, what the hell? I thought that would be a chief of police matter. <laughs> of course, of course. It makes too much sense. But unfortunately, you left it so there was a sleeve or something poking out. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 5.15. That's both good and bad. Going through all that? What? Well, I know that I have some of it. I know we've got the knife, for instance, and the, the glove. Maybe the jar. But there should have been more than that. So, where did that go? Seems to be the only solution for the prosecutors and the police. He says, I can't just forget the SL9 incident. You know why? For now, let's press. Sounds like he's talking about some sort of conspiracy or something like that. Yes, I think I will. And I expect you know exactly what I'm going to present as well.
Let's go all the way back to that statement again. Now, I had a brief look at this at the end of the last video, but let's have a look at the SL9 incident file again. So, we do know the SL9 incident was a case about serial murders. This serial killer had six victims, Edward Jones, Jason Knight, Edith Kirby, Rachel Moss, Jeb Bates, and... And now, it's all been explained. Unfortunately, this leaves us in the same predicament as last time. Ultimately, this is quite irrelevant. It doesn't prove that Lana Sky is innocent. As Emma would say if she was here, the chances of that are very slim, scientifically speaking. The Blue Badger. Oh.
I'm up shit creek without a paddle again. This can't end well. It seems we're pretty good at doing each other's jobs every now and then. Wanna swap? Could this possibly be one final chance? Oh, shit, yeah. I actually forgot about that. Ah, Emma saves the day. That was a bit of an anticlimax. Well, apart from the evidence going missing from the locker, that is the only thing left unexplained about that. Is there a problem with this? Actually, you might be surprised to find out that there is. It might not be glaringly obvious to you, but it probably should be.
Yes, there is something you are missing. So, object. Have you figured it out yet? It was in the video, you might have noticed it. The thing that's missing from the floor plans is the thing that we've been staring at for most of this trial. The demon spawn. That thing's been sitting in my inventory for so goddamn long, it's about time I used it. It could mean a few things, and what you have to do is ask yourself this question. If the blue badger wasn't there in the video, would there be a handprint there? Or did it come afterwards? But wait, doesn't that also mean that Meekins failed to spot it? You didn't need the Luminol to see that one. So, if you think about it, if that handprint wasn't connected to Meekins or Officer Marshall, and it came about before, somehow. And maybe the large amount of blood on the floor that we found with the luminol was also spilt at this time. There is a way.
Everyone who goes into that room has to have an ID card, and when they go into that room, a record is made. <laughs> and of course, by presenting this, I'm now pointing my finger at somebody I don't know, or Miles Edgeworth. He really does get the lion's share, doesn't he? Why does that not surprise me? Who is seven 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 seven? Well, hang on a minute, that's a bit of a jump. Oh, mm, although, I don't know, evidence was taken from his locker. He must have taken it, really. He must have been in there at some point. Objection. That's the stupidest fucking excuse I've ever heard. Maybe. Maybe Angel Star had a point. Oh, come on. That can't be her ID number, can it? Right. Good. Thank you. 
Whoa. Now that's an admission. Shit has hit the fan. I will see you in the final investigation of the game, guys. <laughs>